Hey everyone, it's Skyrolink here. I enjoy a vast variety of genres when it comes to video games, but one of my favorites has got to be RPGs. I enjoy the stories they tell, as well as the satisfaction of leveling up and getting stronger. Grinding doesn't sound all that enticing, but hey, I enjoy it. Anyways, today I've decided to make a list of my top 10 personal favorite RPGs. You're gonna see some familiar titles here, but also some that may make you go, Huh? This is my opinion, and knowing my tastes, it's probably someone's least favorite game in this list. But hey, that's just how life works sometimes. Anyways, on to the countdown. Number 10, Arc Rise Fantasia. This, fellas, is what we call a hidden gem. Arc Rise Fantasia may seem like your run-of-the-mill RPG, and yeah, it kinda is, but that's not a bad thing. It's a focused product, and a damn good one at that. This came out at a time when there weren't too many heavy hitters in the JRPG market for the Wii yet, so it was nice to get something good. I will say though, while this game may be easy to understand, it is very difficult, especially the bosses. They will not hesitate to kick your ass if you aren't playing smart. Normally, I don't like hard games, but this is one of the few exceptions to that. It feels very good when you succeed in this game, and I mean very good. Did I mention this game has skits? Oh man, it's feeling like a Tales game up in here! Also, this game is legendary for having some of the best voice acting in gaming, period. Like, it's some good stuff right here. Take a listen. Yes! The man who uses law to bring understanding to the world. That's you, Lark! Phew. <sighs> That's stupid. I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. You're hurt. Let me heal you with magic. Yes, please. Ah! Help me! I don't want to die! Help me, Mr. Lark! All in all, this game is very good and well worth your time. So Arc Rise Fantasia, you get a good old thumbs up from me. Number 9, Persona 4. A life simulation game fused with an RPG? Say it ain't so. This little doohickey is a journey following the day-to-day -day life of a silent teen who everyone loves. It's fun, I swear. Please don't leave. This is a child of the Big Boy SMT series, so it's not as difficult as those. Think of it as training wheels. Enjoy this game based on a lot of things. The story is enjoyable, the characters are endearing, the gameplay is fun, and I enjoyed fusing personas. Really helped me feel like a big boy. I played other Persona games, but this one just sat right with me the most. I'd recommend this game for those wanting to get into the Persona or SMT series. By the way, I played the PS2 original and not Golden, so don't ask me if I like Marie, okay? I don't even know who she is. Like, who is this? Who are you? Number 8, Digital Devil Saga. This is the older brother of the Persona series and the second cousin twice removed from the mainline SMT games. Mainline or not, this game is hella solid. It's a more story-driven experience. We're not some silent boy in a post-apocalyptic world. We're a tribe of people in a post-apocalyptic... Wait. This is a unique SMT experience as there is no demon summoning involved. Instead, you devour your foes and gain their powers. It's a vor simulator through and through. Also, the soundtrack is god tier. Lots of good stuff in this nice little package. Wrapped with a little bow around. I enjoy this game a ton and it is also my favorite SMT game. Hence why it's here. Shocker, I know. Number 7, Shadow Hearts from the New World. Here's an oddball of an RPG. This isn't your typical fantasy setting because we're in America. More specifically, the era of the Roaring Twenties. Sounds wacky, I know, and it is. I really like this game, and its setting had a huge part in that. It was cool to visit real-world locations like Chicago, Rio de Janeiro, and Alcatraz, just to name a few. Another cool feature is the twist of the battle system. Just like the two games before it, the game is turn-based, but your actions are based on the Judgment Ring system. You hit the button in that sweet spot and watch the action take place. It's fully customizable too, so you can fit it to your liking. The game is a fun time, and I wish this little zinger, the whole franchise in general, got more recognition. Oh well. Those of us who played them will live to tell the tale. Number 6, Star Ocean Till the End of Time. Here we have the third game in the Star Ocean franchise, as well as my first Star Ocean game. This game follows the adventures of Fate Lion God as he travels through space and explores various planets. It's pretty cool, honestly. And this game, I am happy I bought on a whim. 
It's an action RPG through and through, and this is a pretty chunky package for the time, coming on a whopping two discs, which is something you never really saw once the PS2 came around. There are also many areas to explore and side things to do, like crafting. Yippee! The story is pretty good, as well as hosting some pretty cool characters, even if the voice acting is hit or miss. This game does get some flack for a certain plot twist near the end of the game, I personally didn't mind it. Overall, this is a very solid action RPG for the console, and a personal favorite of mine. Give it a shot if you want to give it a chance. Number 5, Rogue Galaxy. Oh wowie, another space adventure, but this time with pirates. Sounds pretty rad, huh? Well it is! At least to me anyways. Here we have another action RPG, this time by the wonderful Level 5, which is a fantastic studio kicking ass during this era. The cell shaded graphics help make this game stick out, and it still looks good to this day. The soundtrack is also pretty great too, giving me some major Dark Cloud 2 vibes. The gameplay is fun, and I found the environments on the planets you explore to be pretty good looking. Seems like I'm just into the graphics in this game, like, I mean, look at this stuff. Some good stuff right here. This game seems to be one of those hit or misses for folks, as I see people either talk fondly of it, or downright hate it. Me? I really like it a ton. One critique that I will agree on is that the balancing is a little wonky, as a single hit from an enemy takes like one third of your health. But I could overlook that because I really enjoyed this game. It may not be for everyone, but I could definitely say it is for me. Number 4, Tales of Legendia. Look, I'm sure there are better Tales games out there, as there is still so much of these games that I have yet to play, but damn it, I love Legendia. I can see why folks consider this to be a big miss in the franchise, but I've loved every second of this game. I think the combat is simple, but fun. I enjoyed the story I had to tell, I liked all the characters, Sennel and Chloe for life, and the music. Oh. My. God. It's all great stuff, which is the one thing all Tales fans seem to agree on about this game. I've played a few Tales games before Legendia, but unlike those, I actually finished this one. It's a shame the character quests aren't for you, though. That's like my only complaint, really. I honestly don't have a clue how this game became one of my favorite Tales games, since the things I've heard make this game out to be bad, but hot damn am I glad that I gave it a shot. I can officially say, Tales is on the menu from here on out. Number 3, Xenoblade Chronicles. This is the game that really opened the floodgates for RPGs for me. Before, all I really played was Mario RPGs and Kingdom Hearts games, but here was something that I thought looked interesting and absolutely blew me away. For one thing, the world was huge, and as an 11 year old who got this game for Christmas in 2014, I was hooked, lined, and synced. I would spend hours wandering around the nooks and crannies and doing quests. It also helped that to go along with that exploration was a fantastic story with great characters and a fantastic musical score to boot. It was heaven on earth. The combat was also pretty unique, as I had characters do auto attacks, while it was your task to use movements and arts effectively to secure victory. It was easy to understand, and fun to watch the damage roll. It's nice that this game got an upgraded art style thanks to Definitive Edition, as well as a little extra story included into the already meaty experience. If you haven't played this game yet, please, do yourself a favor and get your hands on it. It's some good stuff. Number 2, Dragon Quest VIII Journey of the Cursed King. Jesus, it took me till 2019 to play my first Dragon Quest game? It's a shame too, because I would have loved this game when I was younger. Level 5 is back at it again, releasing this banger of an RPG to the PS2. Once again using good old cell shading, the game looks fantastic. And can we talk about that soundtrack? Say what you will about Koichi Sugiyama as a person, you cannot deny that the man had talent, and it shows. This game delivers a bombastic orchestral soundtrack and it is pleasant on the ears. What else is there to say about this game? The combat is simple and classic turn-based goodness, with a pretty neat skill progression system with skill points. It boasts a vast open world waiting to be explored, and the story is simple but engaging and gripping at the same time. This game right here defines the word classic. This is one of my favorite games of all time, and it even helped me through some tough times in my early high school years. It'd probably be number one, if I hadn't played this next game a mere six months later. Number 1, Final Fantasy XII, The Zodiac Age. 
This game doubles down as not only my favorite RPG, but also my favorite game of all time. I know 12 has its issues, and I can see why some folks wouldn't care for this one, but I still love it all the same. I played it at a time where I felt like I was at my lowest, and I just wanted a game to take me away from it all. And this game did just that. Evil East is my favorite world that Final Fantasy has ever created. It was so fun to explore and see the political intrigue the story provided. Speaking of said story, I was hooked, as I had never really played anything like it at the time. I enjoyed the characters. Hell, I even loved Vaughn! He was just like me for real! The gameplay plays like an MMO, which I thought would have turned me off from the game. The inclusion of the Gambit system made it fun. Sure, it felt like you would be on autopilot most of the time, but the system allowed for some fantastic customization to be had. The music is heavenly, and the Zodiac Age reorchestrated pieces are a pleasure to listen to. This wasn't my first Final Fantasy, but it was the first one I actually finished. Quite frankly, this game changed my life, and three years after I played it, it has yet to be topped. Well, those were my top 10 favorite RPGs. Apologies if my commentary wasn't enough to snuff, as this type of content isn't my strongest suit, but I had a lot of fun gushing about these games. I mean, I wouldn't be making a top 10 list if I didn't really care about them. What are some of your favorite RPGs that you've played? Do I have good tastes, or do I have trash tastes? Let me know in the comments below, as I love to see discussions happen. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Peace.